On this episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, we're going to cut down some trees. Hey, Comic-Con hit. Uh, is it a hit, though? Because sometimes it misses. Wondering what Tim Cook has been up to. I got a picture of it. I got a picture of some other stuff, too. And it was glorious. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 181 for Thursday, the 19th of July, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their occasional guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos and that's Kent. Um, you really don't need to pay attention to Kent because he's a douche nozzle. <sighs> um, I, I don't know if I can agree with that, but you know, hey, I'm here. Mm. Um, and you're listening, so you got to pay attention. Mm, we'll get more to that later. Um, <laughs> I'm leading all into the same story. It's just amazing. Hey, dude, uh, so no peaches? No, what's going on with that? Yeah, man, I had a I had a peach tree in my backyard, and it was glorious when mm-hmm. I moved in here. For the, like, the first two years I was here, this thing produced more fruit than I've ever seen on a tree literally in my life. And... You and I grew up around apple orchards and, you know, very, uh, you know, plentiful bearing fruit trees mm-hmm. and this peach tree beat them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then like it just decided, now nah, I'm done. And it's not only stopped growing fruit, it stopped growing leaves. It stopped growing its branches. It stopped uh, everything and just kind of. So, so did you, 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 you tear it down? Yeah. Yeah. It'd been dead there for a little while. It mm. kind of looked like um you know like the, the like the the tree skeletons that you see in front of a haunted house. <laughs> like it kind of <laughs> looked like that. <laughs> wow. I think it just coined the term tree skeleton. Yeah. That's uh, that's uh pretty but, awesome. Yeah, but it you know, it was becoming a safety hazard. I'd mow the grass and these like branches would hang down and I almost lost an eye a couple oh, times. I was, I was going to say you'd hit a peach pit and you'd go fly into the neighbor's yard and take out their eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All, all the above. Uh, but yeah, so I decided, you know what? It'd be uh, cool if I had a, a reason to buy a chainsaw and be ready mm. for the zombie apocalypse. So I, I uh, found a chainsaw on sale and I mm. bought it and I chopped down my tree. I actually bought a chainsaw for much the same reason last year when a tree fell into another tree and the, the second tree saved the first tree from landing in my house. Um, yeah. And then uh, we went and cut down some trees between our house and, and then our neighbor's house. Well, I didn't. I used my winch and, and yanked their sons of bitches down while someone else was doing the cutting because they wanted the firewood. So I was like, well, if you haul this yeah. shit away, you can have it. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, much pruning on both of our parts this week. Yeah, and that that was an added benefit for me too. I got a whole bunch of new firewood. Mm, yeah, and, uh, actually, I actually burned some on. I believe it was Saturday. Yeah, it was Saturday night. It was movie party night. Mm. I uh, got a fire going, and yeah, it smelled awesome. Peach wood is very uh, a very good burning wood. Mm. Uh, we we have all the leaves and, and stuff like that from the trees because they just took the core wood. They weren't going to take all the branches and stuff like that, of course. Mm. But if if you and I were thirteen again, um, or more like ten, probably. Well, anyway, uh, all these branches are in this big pile behind my house, mm. and they would make the perfect fake fort. You know, they'd, they'd actually make a pretty oh, good yeah. real fort, to be honest with you. Uh, right. <laughs> but. Um, yeah. So, Hey, um, Hey dude, I have a, a super pimple, a super pimple, a super pimple on your body. Yes. Oh, so let me explain like a, what, it, let like me a ex- juicy. Pussy. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with any of that. Nothing to do with any of that. Uh, p- pimples primary purpose in life. Let's say that three times fast are <laughs> to annoy the piss out of you. Okay. That's what or they do. Or that pus out of you. Oh, well, no, uh, yeah, that's uh, d- d- gross. And <laughs> I have what I call a super pimple because it's one I cannot escape. It's one that I see all the time. It is right uh, here on my cheek, and it's at that perfect angle to where it catches, like, the, the, the horizon of my cheek from my eyeball's point of view. Yeah. It's on that horizon. So uh, it's not a smooth horizon anymore. It's now a horizon <laughs> with a bump. So it's it's permanently in my line of sight, and I got to tell you, dude, it's 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 one of my least favorite things in the world. Um, yeah. How long have you had this thing? Uh, like four days. Oh man, is it? It's not 
pus producing? Uh, I mean, well, I've, I've, I've begun to take care of it already, but it's still there. I, I still, I can see it right now. I can't, unless I'm looking like it rolling to my eyes to the back of my head, it's still there. So when you say that, that you be, you have begun to take care of it, like, what does that entail? Uh, but, you know, doing the, the, the like all the acne care, like the normal shit you would do to get rid oh, of the like, acne. like 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 rubbing Stridex on your face. No, I just squeeze the shit out of it until it hurts really <laughs> bad, and then I move on with my life. What do you what do you what do you, what do you think I am? A teenage boy <laughs> or a teenage girl? I mean, whatever. No, why are you gonna be genderist? <laughs> I, you're the one that said boy. <laughs> <laughs> and your first reaction was to say girl. I see how it is. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, man, I, I, uh, this weekend we went out and I did a photo shoot and if you're on my Facebook or you're following me on Instagram, you'll soon see a lot of the pictures from it. Well, uh, it, Facebook is already there. I just got to put them on the Insta poop Instagram thing. You know, I, I think it's, I think it's funny that like every week you say, you know what? I'm about to delete Facebook cause Facebook is trash. <laughs> But whenever we talk about putting things on social media, I think now, Facebook is always the first one that you mentioned that you put something on. Well, this is this is a special case because I can't just put like fifty three pictures in a in a, a a photo book on Twitter, my preferred platform. Like that's not that's not how that works, right? You, but you, I mean, you, there's things like Instagram, right? But I haven't figured out Instagram. Instagram, by the way, <laughs> is owned by Facebook, and Facebook is also, as I've said before, the it, Facebook groups is like the only thing I enjoy about Facebook, and that's how I how I found out about the photo shoot. How the ah. people I attended it were also part of the same group, and I posted them to the group, and then shared that post with my normal stream. So. Ah. Uh, back up off it, you, you, you pansy little <laughs> teenage acne boy. Or girl. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing. It was a, uh, I mean, professional uh, makeup, professional hair, professional model, other professional photographers. I say other professional photographers. Other photographers who are also professionals there because I am clearly not. <laughs> and um yeah if you're on the if you're on the Facebook or on the on the on the the Instagram go find that stuff and let me know what you think about it cuz seriously I'm I'm looking for some uh some uh some critiques Excellent um, uh, I bet there's models at Comic-Con Oh probably dude so con yeah San Diego Comic-Con is going on right now the, and th this is this is the Comic Con now Salt Lake Comic Con. I find out when that is ahead of time. Dragon Con, Gen Con, Gary Con. Like I know, I know Con all, Con. Yeah, yeah, Con Con. You know, uh, 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 what's the Warcraft one there? The the Bliz BlizzCon. BlizzCon. <clears throat> See, that's where I need the uh, mute button. Um, <laughs> BlizzCon. I I know when all these are, but every every summer it surprises the hell out of me when I find out in two days is Comic Con, like yeah. SDCC. It's like. Oh, that's, that's, hmm. Oh, okay. What so I've never actually attended Comic-Con, mm -mm. you know, the Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, but one of the things that I enjoy the most about Comic-Con time is all of the trailers that come out. <laughs> Mike Beam in the chat room said, anal con. Oh, wait, that one's shitty. <laughs> I see what you did there. I'm exactly that far into this beer. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway i made a list of the trailers that i've <laughs> and, watched and, and, yesterday and, and, and today and then squid right after that in the chat room says not like anyone can get in anymore i don't know if he's mentioned if he's talking about sdcc or anal con i'm not sure which <laughs> i'm gonna leave that one right there um <laughs> <laughs> so all so, right yeah. dude i don't know i don't know if you have seen any of these trailers I over the not. last few days i found out today that comic-con was this weekend like th <laughs> this is this is, i'm not kidding when i say it. i never find out like next year someone tell me someone let me know the com hey, comic-con's coming in three months uh <laughs> because I, I i wasn't even on the lookout for trailers because i didn't know comic-con was happening right until i was posting pictures right before this this podcast Oh my gosh. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list them, list the ones that I've watched over the last two days. And then okay. I'll just give my quick, like a hot take okay. on the trailer. And, uh, so do I get feel to free to react, feel free to interrupt and react if you choose, or just let me run through them either way. Okay. Uh, so the second trailer, the second full trailer for Bohemian Rhapsody came out, Ooh. which of, of 
course, is the Freddie Mercury and Queen story. Uh, wow. Uh, a lot of the complaints that people had about the first trailer, trailer, like it it doesn't hint at his sexuality, doesn't hint at his illness, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, fuck off. That, all that stuff's in the movie, as is quite evident yeah. in the second trailer. Do you think they did that because of all the hype or all the, uh, the anger around the Probably. first one? Or were they planning Probably, on doing maybe. this anyway? Maybe. I don't know. Because the first one wasn't really a trailer. It was, it was really like a, uh, not a preview, not a trailer. What's the what's the other one? The 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 quick and down dirty. Like here's the teaser. The teaser. There you go. Yeah, I, whatever. Uh, fuck people that prejudge things and just want to yell on the internet. I mean, that's mm. what that's pretty much what internet communities have become now. Like I am so pissed off because, and then they wait to see the same, the thing so they can fill in the blank, of. But they already knew they were going to be pissed. But let me <laughs> you know let me see the thing so that I can. Tell you why I'm pissed. Uh, Chris, anyway. Chris Gilcon. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Bohemian Rhapsody cannot wait, dude. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Another thing I can't wait to see is Better Call Saul season four. Holy shit, hype is real, dude. Mm. Um, Stranger Things season three mm. had a teaser that. Uh, have you seen this? I, I I heard I heard inklings ahead of time that it was coming out soon. Although it would have been nice if those inklings had been directly tied to SDCC, so I'd know that was coming out soon. But yeah, I'd heard right. this was coming. I but I have not seen it. I haven't seen any of these. Yeah, so it doesn't really give any plot points away, but it's basically an advertisement for a 1980s mall. Mm, and dude, I've heard you about will this. have you will have some some flashbacks of being 10 years old when you watch this. It is exactly. Well, accurate every 80s mall they re- they released this last weekend but they didn't tie anything to it right they were just like oh here's the thing they didn't, um, they didn't make yeah, any they announcements should... with it because i think that's what they said on court yeah. killers this week yeah 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 um man uh everything stranger things is just magical i can't yeah. wait yeah that's, that's all right good. um next up doctor who series 11 this is the first <laughs> doctor who season that has the female doctor right um um, there's not much revealed here, but just to see her as the doctor and mm. she's doing doctor shit is pretty damn cool. Mm. Uh, cannot wait for that. I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll quote Brady Haran, which will come up later too. Doctor yeah. who, doctor who is rubbish. Well, <laughs> he can eat a dick. <laughs> um, lo- love you, Brady, but hate your opinion <clears throat> on that. Anyway, so Spider-Man on PS4 is finally coming out in Zep. September, yeah, September. It is finally coming out. The much hyped game. This thing looks fucking amazing. If you like Spider Man and you like video games, I'm pretty sure this is for all of you. Um, next up is Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is a new animated Nickelodeon show. This looks like total trash, and uh, just fucking skip it. <laughs> That's what the trailer told me. <laughs> the, <laughs> next up is the <laughs> this the preview live- is rated F for fucking forget it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next up is the upcoming DC Universe uh, TV series called Titans. Right. Um. Okay. Wow. Heard, okay. So I heard a little bit about this on DTNS today. Yeah. So for for starters, uh, this is very much in keeping with the the darkness of like the Justice League movies. Right. It's very dark. But this one goes quite dark. The trailer, in fact, was rated TVMA mm-hmm. because when Robin, who is like the I guess the guy, like the main character in this show. Robin comes out kicking ass and somebody said something about Batman. Like, aren't you the, the kid that hangs out with Batman or something like that? And he says, fuck Batman. It's not bleeped. It's not like, so he just says, fuck Batman. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know, but this is going to be one of the, this is going to be like the flagship show. I think on the new DC universe streaming service that's coming out this fall right so that that in itself is interesting it's going to be like netflix prices like seven bucks 7.99 something like that so i I don't know we'll see see. i'm not excited Uh, yeah so next up is a trailer teaser not a teaser trailer but a trailer teaser basically a little thing saying hey guess what there's a trailer coming out tomorrow (laughs) 
for the movie Glass. I I didn't like that when they did it for Star Wars for The Force Awakens back in yes. whatever fucking year that was. They were they were like, "Hey, for uh, there's going to be a trailer tomorrow." Or no, the, no, they were like, um, "Stay tuned for such a show." I think it was like the Super Bowl or whatever for a special teaser for the new Star Wars movie. Like, fuck off. Yeah, it was a yeah, it was a trailer teaser. Yeah, fuck uh, off. Not even a teaser trailer. That's yeah. So anyway, so for the movie Glass, uh, you, it doesn't really show us anything other than to say that uh, hey, there's a trailer coming, and uh, I got a lot of hype, dude, for mm. for Glass. That's the new Shyamalan movie. That's kind of the. Uh, it's hard for me to explain it without giving spoilers for a previous Shyamalan movie, but uh, basically, it is it, it's, uh, it's a continuation a story, that, right? It is a continuation that brings like basically the clashing of two universes. Mm. It um, well, when I say universes, it's like what you thought were standalone films are actually connected, and this movie is the connective fiber. Mm. Um, I'm pretty excited. I feel like Shyamalan is back after um, Split. I feel like that movie was fantastic, and Shyamalan is back in true like old school Shyamalan form, Split and I'm um, really good. looking forward. To yeah, Split was was very good. So next up is a teaser trailer. This time an actual teaser trailer gotcha. for the movie Godzilla King of the Monsters. I know you don't give half a fuck about monster movies. Um but I mean um, I, I mean have, uh, Skull Island was 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 watchable. I I enjoyed watching it. I did not okay. want more at the end of it. Okay, well, right. So this is the next part in the series. This is so Skull Island at the end gives you that little like mm-hmm. you know hint at the bigger universe and ties it with Godzilla and Mothra and all that shit. So this movie is kind of like that, you know, here's here's Godzilla fighting a bunch of monsters and shit. And I like I've said many times on this show before, I am a kaiju nerd and I cannot wait to see Godzilla fighting a bunch of monsters and shit on the screen. The only thing in the teaser is Millie Bobby Brown trying to raise someone on the radio and she hears sounds of destruction instead of someone's voice answering her. And, um, yep. Can't wait. The final thing kind of blew my mind because this was not expected in any way. Star Wars is coming back out with clone wars. Yes. The much beloved cartoon that was kind of cut short when Disney bought Lucasfilm. Right. They just like kind of ended everything that Lucasfilm was having, you know, was was, was going on in the company yeah. at the time. They just like, okay, stop everything. <clears throat> We're going to kind of start f- from scratch. Well, they're bringing Clone Wars back to finish it. Yep. And that trailer was so freaking good. And like I spent most of the trailer just like, oh, my God. What am I watching? Oh, no. Is this for real? Oh, my God. Uh, but yeah, like, I I mean, man. This is actually, I, actually breaking news that was brought to me by way of Twitter from one each Lucas Fleur. So Ah, he did tweet about it. Yeah, yeah, he hadn't tweeted in months. Yeah. But he was so excited he was compelled to tweet about this. It was, on the, it was on, the top of my, uh, on the top of my Twitter feed. So, <laughs> so the Twitter algorithm yeah. is working for somebody, at least. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, that was kind of my, uh, trailer experience from mm. Comic-Con over the last couple of days. Now, granted, not all of these trailers were from Comic-Con, but the vast majority of them were and uh, yeah, much hype yep. looking forward. Um, so uh, let's see here. Uh, hopefully this works fine. Uh, everybody knows we're Apple fans. We're going to talk about Apple for just a minute, but not about their products. We're going to talk about their CEO. And I don't know if this is true. It's not corroborated except for another anonymous source. But in the Tadpool, there was an event where somebody had gone and lost their phone. Well, they turned it in for repair. Apple lost their phone. And the, the, con- the representative that called them to tell them what was going on with it and how they were going to fix it wasn't just some schmuck from some call center and fucking indie, indie juju or whatever. Um, <laughs> it was... The C- that's, that's in Wisconsin, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Indie, indie Juju, Wisconsin. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a little backwoods. Um, <laughs> they 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 use peach trees for firewood there. So oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've been there. <laughs> uh, hopefully this works. Um, 
Yeah, it was uh, it was it was uh, CEO Tim Cook called him and told him what was up and how the things were gonna go, and then wait, someone wait, else wait. comes back in, uh, says, uh, "Yeah, I work at Apple Care, and that's not uncommon. It happens about three times a week or so." What that the Tim Cook himself is comes calling down. is calling people uh, about that, their Apple problems. That is incredible. If this if he does this a few times a week, how? How are we just hearing about this? Like this is this is pretty. Um, pretty well, he, he said he says cool. uh, he's been there a little over thirteen months, and he's had th- he's he's had three interactions from Tim Cook that have hit his office. Office. Huh. So okay. it's, it's at least a couple times a year. Like that's, I mean, because back in the day you could email Steve and just be like, "Hey, Steve is Steve at Apple dot com," and <laughs> you know he would just randomly answer people in in fits of anger, rage, and pain. And, um, <laughs> right. You know, sometimes it'd be nice. Sometimes it wouldn't, but it, you, you might get a response. So it's kind of like a game mm-hmm. to fill his inbox. <laughs> um, it's nice that, uh, th- that's that kind of customer service. Like you're not going to get, uh, 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 such an Adela. Is that, that the dude for Microsoft? I think that's the dude for Microsoft, uh, calling you up to tell you that your service tablet is going to be in the mail in the next, in, in the next couple of days, you know? So, yeah, I would never expect anything like that from Microsoft. No. <laughs> They're like the most impersonal company ever. It's getting better and still not good. Uh, <laughs> uh, Microsoft, do you want to uh, 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 sponsor the Richard Misery podcast? By all means, we can. <laughs> we'll our, talk nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our minds can be made to change. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, did you see, uh, you saw a lot of trailers, but did you see any movies this weekend? Ah, uh, dude, no, I didn't. I didn't watch any movie. I, real quick note, I did watch the first episode of Agretzko on Netflix. The, yeah. the anime that you talked about, last mm-hmm. dude, so good. <laughs> about halfway through, when she starts singing, I had the most heartfelt, just joy. Oh, and if you've only made it to the first I, episode, you haven't seen, you haven't uh, seen anything yet. Yeah. So highly. Highly recommended to anybody that has not watched this yet. There's only 10 episodes. They're 15 minutes each. I think the last episode is like 18 minutes or something like that. It's yeah. basically 15 minutes each. Oh, so good. At least give it a shot like I did. It's, I'm, it's I surprising. It's really surprising how in the, the storyline. Uh, okay, so here's the other thing. You got to watch it with subtitles on. I forgot to tell you this. Watch it with subtitles on. Because subtitles are in English, but it says different stuff than the voiceovers. Oh my. So it's okay. like two different stories. Well, it's the same story, but it's Shit. like told through two different. Oh, it's so good, dude. All right. So I'm going to, all right. I'm going to continue <laughs> to watch it the way I'm watching it now because like there's still subtitles for like the signs because all the yeah. writing is in Japanese. Right. And you'll, you'll get the translation at the bottom of that. So I'm going to finish watching it the way I'm watching it now. Yeah. And then I'll probably go back and watch it again with subtitles on. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's, um, uh, yeah, there's. I like anomalies, and that's that's one of the anomalies in the anime world. Uh, but yeah. So anyway, back to the, the subject at hand. I have not watched any new movies this week, but I would highly encourage everyone with me this weekend. Let's just as as a, a community event. Let's all go see Hotel Transylvania three. <laughs> Um, I think we should all go see it. Take, take your wife, tomorrow. take your kids, take take your yeah. neighbors, take uh, yeah, and then go back on Saturday and mm-hmm. yeah, ask your neighbors to come. Um, Sunday, yeah. make it a like a coworker event. Uh, take them. He, to see here's this. The, here's the magical thing about Hotel Transylvania because it's a it's a uh, a vampire movie. Vampires sometimes can't get tickets, so you can actually just go there, buy like an extra hundred tickets or so, and just <laughs> yes, leave them at the counter. You have yeah. to invite them in, though. Yeah, but I you, mean, you, I, you I, leave them at the counter, then you walk out to the door, and you just say out into the parking lot, I invite all vampires to come use the tickets. Yes. And then they oh, can go yes. in there and use them. You'll, you won't see them, but it'll be appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, 100 <laughs> tickets. Uh, at, Each showing. Yeah, as many showings as you can. That would be <laughs> wonderful. Uh, right. uh, we, we got this, don't we? Welcome to your B-Team Movie Draft Minute presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of July 16th, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. You know what? It's so hot out, my milkshake melted before anyone ever got to the yard. 
Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Walking Drunk is in last place with $275.1 million. Team Richard Misery is in fifth place. Thanks to Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation's $50 million weekend, bringing their total to $430.5 million. Team Game Night is in fourth place with $453.4 million. Team The Bond Spot is in third place. Thanks to Skyscraper's $27 million weekend, bringing their total to $569.2 million. Team Ever Drink is in second place with seven hundred fifty-five point seven. $7 million. And in first place yet again, it's Team Movie Party with $972.1 million. That's your Movie Draft Minute. All totals are accurate as of July 18, 2018. Thank you again, Big Voice Jay. You yep. are the man. Uh, dude, all right, we're still in fourth, I'm sorry, fifth place, but we are creeping up on fourth yep. place. Hotel Transylvania has helped us out a lot. As of right now, we're only about ten million dollars yep. behind. Um, I think it's a safe bet that we're going to overtake them for fourth. Uh, well, I think the, we got a shot at third, dude. They only have one one spot left or one movie left, and it's, it's Slender Man. So that's man, uh, j- just like a, a Quiet Place was was a, a, a sleeper. A Slender Man could be the same thing. Now, it hasn't been too long since the whole Slenderman craze came out to stir up enough enough interest, or yeah. are the people that were most affected by the Slenderman uh, uh, mystique now of the age to buy their own ticket? So mm. there's a there's a gamble either way there. So they they, they, they still got they, they still got some some long legs, mm-hmm. uh, no pun intended, and um, <laughs> we we I mean we have two movies left though so. <laughs> Because because Hotel Transylvania is hitting hitting its stride, um, we still got Mission Impossible of fourteen, and yeah. we 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 could we could get third. We I mean, Vod Squad still got a movie out. They got two two in theaters. That, that's gonna be tough to get that third place from them. It's not impossible, but it's gonna be tough. But we should yeah. be able to at least get up to fourth. Save a little so, face. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. It all rests on on Mission Impossible because I mean, th- th- so they do have Mamma Mia, the sequel to Mamma Mia, mm-hmm. uh, left. That's gonna do all right, but man, if if Mission Impossible does Gangbusters, because there's nothing else in the theater that's that's like that demographic, right? Like right. the the you know eighteen to thirty four year old male or whatever that that you know sweet spot is. Yeah, um, Mission Impossible is gonna get that audience. Mm. I man. It's, uh, I'd say it's a long shot for third, but it's possible for right. us. There's yeah. no way we're getting first or second. Uh, movie party is is poised to break a billion dollars, which I don't even know if, if the regular like the uh, you know main show um, movie draft has ever surpassed a billion dollars. Um, I don't remember it doing that. Hmm. Um, man, movie party had by far the best slate. Like, uh, so good. Yep. Well done to Movie Party. I mean, you might as well just start celebrating now because they are so far. They are over two hundred million dollars ahead of second place. Yeah, and and Have a Drink has one movie left. It's Crazy Rich Asians, which again yeah. could be big, but big for a comedy. You're looking at one fifty, one eighty, and they need a solid two hundred plus to get past it. So, yeah. um, so uh, smart money for us is fourth place. But the if you want to gamble, how, a little, how third. awesome how awesome would it be if uh, Mission Impossible uh, fourteen was like the breakout hit of the summer? Like nobody expected it to happen. We spent all this money on it, and it just it just goes gangbusters, and yeah. we end up in like second place because it just goes super duper huge. That, dude, if it if it made Avengers money, that's yeah. It would have to. Like it would have to make Avengers money. Um by the, by the way, we are in third place now for the dollar per dollar. Yeah, 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 uh, the inc- best value. Yeah, Incredibles 2 came in is sitting at 20 million per dollar spent. Um mm-hmm. Book Club is sitting at 13 million, 13 and a half, we're sitting at 13.4. So Yeah. We're, we're, oh. we're, we're just we're just coming in all sorts of uh <laughs> also or all sorts of third. So speaking of a quiet place, do you ever watch the uh, honest trailers on YouTube? I I haven't the, in a while, but I used to watch like all of them. Yeah, they're pretty good, man. The one this week was for a quiet place. Oh yeah, and uh, it's quite enjoyable. If you like a quiet place, I highly suggest checking that out. 
and even more so if you're a fan of The Office because mm. he makes a, a few Office jokes. Um, yeah, mm. pretty okay. good. Pretty good. Uh, but you know what's not a joke? Uh. We could always use a couple extra bucks to help us with things like plane tickets to events, podcasting equipment. Um, you Amos, know, Amos needs a mute button. Yeah, a mute button <laughs> for Amos so that we don't have to hear him when he coughs and sneezes into the microphone anymore. Or, or um, can't when he talks. Like, can we sell back his mixer? Is that a possibility? <laughs> 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 but man, it'd be really cool if people helping us out had a way to get money to us. Uh, they do. It's called patreon.com slash ritual misery. Cruise on by there. Um, so here's the thing, dude. I'm going to be completely honest. We love the fact that we have some people that subscribe to us on Twitch that that uh, uh, are giving us either uh, 250 of Bezos money that he doesn't need or... Uh, for free, by the way, you can just give us that money for free because if you're a Prime member and you go to Twitch Prime and then do the little thing and hoopy doo hoo, you get a free one. And it basically, Jeff Bezos shows up in my house with a two dollars and forty nine and a half cents and delivers it directly to me. Um, I slap him on the bottom and send him on his way, and then we are <laughs> that much richer. Um, Someone so, please animate that. I want to <laughs> see this. I didn't need the visual of that event. Um, but yeah, you can do that. Or, but really, we we would r much rather have patrons, to be completely honest with you, because it's less of your money going off into the ether, and it's mm. uh, more money mm. uh, helping us out directly to where we can make magic happen here on the Ritual Misery podcast. So cruise on by patreon.com slash ritual misery. And um, if you give a fuck, you can, you can even you got a buck. Uh, uh, Give it to us. <laughs> uh, uh, go see, go see Cal. Is that what it is? Um, yeah, that's an old commercial, old uh, car salesman commercial from California. I'm sure Squid oh, remembers it. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, dude. I hear that you have a game this week. Um, yeah, it'd be really cool if uh, we had a bumper for that. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kids done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Another big voice Jay special because he's awesome. Oh man, I love that so much. I kind of half assed jokingly asked for a bumper for that last week, and before our show was over, we had one in our inbox. Yep. Um, big voice Jay, you are amazing. Thank you again for that. Um, all right, Amos, I've got a game for you, mm -hmm. and it is called. Podcast or no? It would be really fucked up if I had a game for you and you wrote it. <laughs> like you wrote the questions and didn't know the answers. Uh, so that's a whole new game. So we're gonna try that next week. <laughs> I'm I'm down. I'm down. Uh, uh -huh. All right. So the way that I'm gonna score this, since mm -hmm. it is just the two of us here this evening, is that if you get it right, you get the point. If you get it wrong, I get the point. Oh, okay. All right. There are only five questions okay. in this quiz. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the title of a podcast. I'm going to give you a short description of it. Uh -huh. and you're going to tell me if it's real or not. Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> this this so right. ties into what I was wanting to talk about earlier. Ah, huh. I wonder if that's a coincidence. <laughs> uh, All right, dude. The first podcast is called my dad wrote a porno okay a man discovers that his dad wrote a dirty book and reads it aloud on his podcast hmm is that real or no i'm gonna say no that would be a point for me sir because oh. that is d indeed a real <laughs> podcast I mean, dude, what would you what would you do if you found out that your parent wrote a dirty book and you discovered it? Would you be horrified or would you be compelled to 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 do a podcast about it? Buy them a beer. I wouldn't do a podcast, man. What a limited run. Like once you read it once. And what happens if you're recording the podcast, especially if you're doing it like a live on Twitch and you're recording the podcast and then like it, you, you start actually getting aroused? <laughs> is, like, let's hope it's an audio only like like, <laughs> like how does that classify what, what what which which level of 
what the what the hell does that oh my. is because it's it's not child abuse. It, I mean, it, it, <laughs> you know, but you're still getting turned on by your parent. Like it just. <laughs> It's oh my god! I would not read it. Is what it would, that, I would not read it. I would. I would just. <laughs> I, would, I would find the the cleanest copy I could, mount that shit like in a frame, and put it on the wall, and just leave it there. And never read that shit. I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know, like, dude. It's like forever ago when when my dad passed away, and I was cleaning out his house. Mm. I found a VHS cassette of a uh, uh, you know a movie, and. I mean, it's not like I've never seen a dirty movie before, but I wanted nothing to do with this, this VHS cassette because my father had watched this. And I mean, I don't know if he's like the rest of us, but I know what people do. <laughs> they watch these movies. And I oh, just my God. What, what, if he, what if he was just sitting there watching it and he was like just critiquing it? Like he, you didn't find it. It was buried in the backyard somewhere. It's like a vault of essays on all this porno. <laughs> and, and and how it's like the, the sin of the world or whatever. And he's just got like all these yeah. handwritten, like multi-volume essays about all the <laughs> stupidest porns in the seventies. Oh my gosh. And like yeah, there, there's one out- essay, there's one essay that's not finished because he never finished that tape. And now you've, you've gone and destroyed the tape. So his work can never be, never be finished. And now he's just floating around in fucking purgatory. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! It turns out that that he got that tape out of a vending machine at the bar in town. Uh, I, because some, I didn't know he had that. To, yeah, it was it was a thing for a little while. Um, somebody in town, and I'll think of it. Stevie Stevie Winchester told me that he was there the night my dad got that out of the machine. Why is Stevie always the place? Like. <laughs> Like you don't oh go to the bar, God. you go to Stevie. Stevie happens to be at the bar today. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. All okay, right. Next question. Let's let's go. All right. So the next podcast is called Ballpoint. In each episode, the host describes another writing pen in her vast collection. Real or no? I'm gonna go with real because I know there's already a couple other pen podcasts out there that, that have a lot of traction. Um, yeah, I do not doubt that there are several pin podcasts out there, but ballpoint is not one of them. Hmm. That's two points for me already. You suck. (laughs) All right. The next one is called the barnyard. Okay. The two hosts debate which, which, hold on, let me start over. The two hosts debate which would make the better intimate partner. And it's called the barnyard. Is that an episode description or the podcast description? This is the show. This is the description. This is a a shortened form of the description of the show. I'll read it one more time. It's called The Barnyard. The two hosts debate which animal would make the better intimate partner. Ah, see, I missed animal. I missed animal because I just heard each each host discuss which would make the better partner. I'm like, against each other? Like, that's... (laughs) Right. That would be an interesting show in itself. Like it, it concludes with them getting together and they're like, you know, <laughs> you're right, Jim. You are a better lover than I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aim is the barnyard. Um, is I'm going to, I'm going to go real because why not? <laughs> Thank God you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought it was real. Would you have downloaded this to, no! to try out an episode? <laughs> No, I, just, I I have gone through my experimental, like, I'm going to find the most random shit in the world and listen to that podcast phase. And I, I, I survived it. I'm not going back. When you said that you were experimental, I thought you were going elsewhere with that. <laughs> like, oh, damn, dude. I don't need a narrative of my high school years. <laughs> All right, all right. The next podcast is called Yo, Is This Racist? The hosts answer voicemails and emails about whether or not something is racist. Real or no? And Beam in the chat says, moo, I mean, boo. <laughs> and, and that's bad. <laughs> Um, oh. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna follow the chat room on this one. And say it's real. It is in fact real. <laughs> one point. 
You finally got a point. Yes. Uh, you didn't. You didn't skunk me out. Oh my gosh. So this. <laughs> This this show is called Yo Is This Racist, and it reminded me though it didn't deal with racism. It reminded me of earlier this week when I reached out to my friends to find out if something was homophobic, uh, tweet tweet worthy, <laughs> or if if I was a piece of shit for even thinking about tweeting. This. Did you get a response? Um, I did, and I ultimately decided that no, I should not tweet it. <laughs> So I so, so I you get a response and you find out yes you are a piece of shit. Got it. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, so ne- I, next so, time you just have to send it to me because I thought it was hilarious. Well, right. Uh, so my advice to anyone out there: if you think that you want to drunk tweet, don't do that. Drunk text or drunk email instead, and yeah. have someone tell you, no, don't share that on Twitter. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, all right. The next one in the final one mm. is called Lettuce Life. The host describes her victories and defeats in her efforts at growing various kinds of lettuce. Real or no? I mean, I've already lost the game, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to say yes, it's real. <laughs> it is not. I totally made this one up. Totally game theory here. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, that one is fake. I won the game four to one. Um, overall, I had I had only two actual real podcasts in here, and I made mm. the other three up. But the kind of to my point is just to show that they the variety of podcasts that are out there and available and on iTunes is like, dude, it's everything. This lettuce life I made up, but there are podcasts that are similar to this. There are people chronicling the minutia of some yeah. obscure hobby. It's, it's almost more of an audio diary than, than a podcast even. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know. It was an, it was an interesting experience looking for, for podcasts that actually exist. Mm. And then when I came up with a fake one, I had to like research it pretty hard to make sure that it wasn't a real one. Mm. Oh my gosh. Crazy, crazy. So I've been doing a lot of, a lot of podcasting lately and I found, I've found some, some things I found, found some, some, some issues and some, uh, some trends. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to bring up the unmade podcast. Yes. In this, um, we mentioned Brady Heron earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is co-hosted by Brady. Mm-hmm. Um, Brady and his, and his friend Tim, and I don't I don't know that his friend does anything else, so it doesn't matter. Um, the Unmade Podcast basically they they come up with four ideas and discuss the the likelihood that they could be viable podcasts, and then kind of the, as they've gotten into the stride, of episode five and five and six, they've actually started going into and really getting into the minutia of that podcast, or just going on some random tangent. And it's amazing. It's so fun. It's it's all the things I love about Brady about his it, it, it being eccentric and and willing to to ask the questions that just pop into his head and actually explore it. And this was like his his old high school mate. And they are like they are they click like they are they're oh yeah <laughs> it's, and, it's hilarious. I mean they both have they both have Aussie accents mm-hmm. and it's you know and I, oh speaking of is this racist I actually texted you before like i don't know if this is racist but the the australian accents automatically make it an entertaining show yeah it's it's it, automatically it, it increases the the likelihood of me laughing at any any stupid shit they say <laughs> yeah definitely yes um yes. yeah so that one's fun uh they had one it was called uh, tommy ball they they were talking about a podcast that where they were describing a fake sports game and yeah, where they basically were making it up on the fly. It, so the the first special was like episode seven or eight or whatever b- between those two, and they actually did that podcast. Like they they brought it to <gasps> fruition, and it, oh. I listened to it on my way home. And that's probably why I'm in such a good mood. It was hilarious. It's so funny, oh. but you have Dude. to you have to let it build up. So you have to start at episode one and kind of turn through the first couple that are a little rough. They're funny, but they're a little rough. By the time they hit five or six, they're full full stride. They're even wrapping their their like little advertisements and things like that into it, 
and it's the the, the whole thing is just really fun. Um, and then when you finally get to the Tommy Ball episode where they actually just do an episode of Tommy Ball, like it's it's ridiculous. It's so fun. It's so good. Uh, I'm I'm not taking your advice. I am right now downloading the Tommy Ball episode because I I don't have the patience. I am gonna watch it, or I'm gonna listen to this immediately to like tomorrow. Yeah. Um. So so there's that one. Uh. There, there's a few others that I've I've because I've been on a, on a huge photography kick lately. I've been building my 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 home studio, uh, going to events things like that. And. <sighs> I found one that I absolutely loved. It's on the five by five network. It's called on taking pictures. It's really good. And it's also over. <laughs> the last episode came out today. So oh, I, geez. yeah, I, okay. I caught the last two. Um, it was just two guys talking about two photographers talking about not just life, but photography and not getting too much into the gear, but they would talk about gear and it's it just really good. And it's over now. So there's that. Um, there's camera dads, which is another podcast with two brothers that talk about going out and taking pictures of their kids, things like that. And I got to tell you, the audio is horrible. Holy shit. Like there Ooh. is, there's a, and it, it, it's probably listening, listenable to most people, but to me who produces several podcasts and, and, and edits and things like that. And I take pride in the audio quality. Like I'm always tinkering with my setup because I want the best quality audio I can possibly get. Mm. And it's, 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 it's really sad. Um, <laughs> It, it really, really just irritates the crap out of me. Um, now, I'm, <laughs> as I say that, I'm looking over and I'm almost clipping on my uh, on my thing over here. So that's going to be fun to edit later. <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. And one of the podcasts that I listen to is the, the podcast radio show by Dave Jackson. Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. He works for Libsyn. Uh, been podcasting for over 10 years. He's one of the original names, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, man, I have to tell you, lately, as I'm listening to the podcast radio show, I'm hearing all the things that Dave Jackson is doing wrong. How crazy would it be to do a podcast rodeo episode on podcast rodeo and it, let him have it? Oh, my God. It's... It, it and the problem is it's it's not that the podcast is bad it's that the podcast is designed as a subjective critique of other podcasts and he follows his own advice but he he fucks up on other stuff like he didn't oh, what, what was it? there's there's a word the other day that he didn't know how to say and he doesn't he didn't understand what what a, a certain word was and I'm like these these are like not uncommon terms dude like you need to get out of your shell and it's, yeah. it's, and of course I'm, I'm a little OCD and I'm also uh, a middle-aged angry white dude. So I always have like little things that just piss me off for no reason because that's apparently that's what we do. And, um, so I, I don't know how much of it is my neuroses and how much of it is like how, how much you would think if you were listening to it on a regular basis, like I am, mm -hmm. it, it's just, it's, I, I'm not devaluing his opinion at all. I'm stating that, my opinion of that podcast is falling quickly. Uh, yeah. See, it's a cool, neat little show, but like, I, I don't know how you're subscribed to it and continue to listen to it because it's just, I don't know. It's, it's just too much for me. Like it's too much critique. Hmm. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's not new ideas. He's saying the same things about different shows, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Weird thing. Can I can I talk about a podcast that I listened to this week yeah. that you introduced me to? Of course. So, I mean, so everybody knows about 99% Invisible. Right. That's like, that's a show. Um, are you are you a normal subscriber to 99PI? Like, I, I know you've no, listened to a few of them that I sent you and stuff like that, but... Yeah, yeah. Like, I, if something catches my interest or, you know, you suggest an episode or somebody else suggests an episode, like, I always go and get it, and I right. always enjoy it. That's like it's the, e the easy, this easy uh, recommendation to follow through in, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. every time. Like, 99% yeah. Invisible is fantastic. It's just, and the only reason that I don't listen to it all the time is that my podcast queue is already, like, pretty full. Um, but it's, it's definitely like, I'm still subscribed to it. I just don't download every week's 
episodes. Well, anyway, so you said I need to listen to this week's episode, and I did. And it is uh, – it's interesting. <laughs> so he's talking uh, about – Wait, 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 another- wait. So I'm listening to this episode, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a normal 99PI listener. I listen to every episode as soon as it comes out. I've listened to the entire back catalog. Like I, I love 99PI. Um, I yeah. think it's I think it's one of the, one of my favorite podcasts. It's amazing, and mm-hmm. it comes out infrequent enough that I don't mind it jumping in, into my queue. Um, it's one of my automatics. Yeah. I have a lot of them that I don't have on automatic, and I have some of them that are automatically queued up. Um, for example, not to throw any any shade out there, but Night Attack is not on my automatic, but Jury is, Paul, uh, mm-hmm. P3 is, DTNS is not. But then I mostly watch DTNS live anyway. So like, right, there's right. it's it's a subjective thing, but. 99PI is in my automatic queue. Auto mm-hmm. download it, throw it in, make it happen. And this time he's at it's Roman Mars interviewing a person who is starting a new show. <laughs> it's not, as far as I know, it's not a uh, Radiotopia show that he's starting. It's an independent one. Um, yeah. And they play the first episode as the episode of 99PI, which 99PI is is want to do. I'm halfway through this episode and the concept is completely, it blows me away. I arrive at the house and as I'm finishing the episode, I'm texting you telling you, you have to listen to it. Like I didn't even finish it before I sent it to you. Okay. But you, you have finished it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Oh yeah. So the, the, the show in question is called everything is alive. Mm -hmm. And so first of all, let me, let me say this. Before we even talk about what that show is, so Roman Mars, the host of 99PI, he has one of these like really Super calming radio voice. voice. Like he, he sounds like he should be doing ASMR videos or something because he kind of he he hugs up on the mic real tight and he gets real intimate with you and he just he he gently guides you through the conversation that he's having with you. And, and he, the guy he, that he's interviewing that that has. This podcast talks the same way, very quiet, unassuming, and intimate. <laughs> so, so we we had two guys talking to each other like this. And could you could you tell me why you wanted to start this podcast? Oh yeah, well, yeah. Well, there's there's lots of ideas out there, and and this one really <laughs> really struck me. As, I was like, uh, oh my as god! Highly plausible. Like it, it was almost two radio guys trying to seduce each other over the microphone. <laughs> I could not. I thought the point of this episode, like I thought it was a comedic, like there was a guy pretending to be Roman Mars and he was interviewing himself. Bed- Bedwee says so. It turned into SNL sweaty ball skit. You're not kidding. Like that was that's legit. It, it was. You're, you're not wrong. It it, well, it it didn't go there, but yeah, it, it came close. But it gets weirder. <laughs> so this guy's, this guy's podcast, like I said, is called Everything is Alive. And it's this guy interviewing inanimate objects. Right. So it, in the he, example, he, he originally did that, and I was thinking, oh, he's going to ask a question to, like, you know, a uh, uh, a pencil, and the pencil is just not going to answer. And that's going to be the gag. Like, Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Yeah. No, 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 no. No. In the example episode, he interviews a can of generic soda. Yeah. G- was and it, the was soda it, answers go, back. Go to cola. <laughs> yes. Go to cola. <laughs> and so so basically the, the premise is like they, they actually hire – because this is a professional podcast. Like mm. they have producers and shit, right? So they hire an actor to play the object. And it's a freeform, unscripted – so like basically kind of an extemporaneous type uh, podcast where someone plays the object and this guy interviews them and they have to respond as the object. Right. Like what their life is like, their history, their – like I, it is the most surreal, strangest yeah, dude. I don't it, even know the, the how thing. The thing that got it. me was at the end of the episode, Roman Mars is still talking to this dude, and I God, I can't remember his name to save my life. But he, um, he, Roman Mars, is like, so it's scripted, right? And the guy's like, no, no, it's fully unscripted. It's completely ad hoc, it, or, or, or not ad hoc. What's the word I'm looking for, dude? Yeah, uh, 
uh, I don't know, off ad, the cuff. Ad lib. Uh, it's completely ad lib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep, yep. It's it's totally ad lib. We just we just sit down and they and, have a premise and they've done some research and maybe we've done some research and they go in there and and it's it, we just start the interview and, and we don't we don't know <laughs> where it's going to exactly go. Exactly what he said. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it is the weirdest, dude. I got the weirdest sensation like listening to this because it is the most bizarre, weird shit that and, you've and ever the, listened the to. The actor is so good. <laughs> Yes, but it is so good. Like the quality of this podcast is so freaking. There, there's no background noise. Good. There's no reverb, an, an unintentional reverb. It's, well, even it's, I mean, not just audio. Yes, audio quality, but also just content the, quality. The, the interview skills. The the guy ad libbing the as as the the inanimate object. I don't want to spoil it for you. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess we already said it, but uh, it, it, it's it's so, just overall, it's just so oh good. Oh my god! And then. The ending of that episode was simultaneously <laughs> shocking, literally shocking, but also obvious. It couldn't have ended any other way, but I was still shocked at how the episode ended. Um, I don't know how to feel about it. And Beam says, uh, in this episode, we interview a tampon. Uh, yeah, and yeah. If it's done the way that this episode was done, I would listen because I would want to hear what the hell he or she or it has to say. I um, think I might actually seek this show out and yeah. subscribe to it because I don't. I don't know if I could uh-huh. if I could listen to it. Like on, I don't know how often it releases or if it's even out yet. But it's, I it, it's one of those shows. It can't I can't be weekly. I could There's no way. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't listen to this on a weekly basis. Like I would need a break in between episodes to yeah. kind of because it's just it's that intense with and it's it's unintentionally humorous and there's there's certain points where you're like these guys got to start just cracking up laughing and they yeah, don't like they take they take it very seriously yeah but it, if they do it is edited it, perfectly because it's really man it's so good so yeah so that show is called everything is alive mm. it please check it out the oh my god it is. Like even yeah. get, give it five minutes of of a listen if if you can't get through it, and let us know what you think of it because I I gotta know man I audio clips would be best, um but yeah. write, write us an email if you don't feel like recording yourself send it to podcast at ritualmisery dot com I really 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 want to know your thoughts about this now this this is um. This is one of those things where the chat room is actually kind of going on, going down the dirty path and, and talking about tampons and digestive. <laughs> right, it, right, right. It's it's so much. It, it's so much bigger than that. It's so much more realistic than that. It, it, think think more along lines of like Vegasil probably doesn't have much of a story, you know. Um, <laughs> maybe, but I mean, because because the 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 coal issue is held in. Um, Right. Yeah. But, yeah. But think think things like that. That like think of a a, a semi truck tire. Yeah, like the the travels the, and the, the, like the, the travel, the problems, the the, the like especially if it's yeah. on if, if it's on the back of the trailer, you know the mm. shit they've carried. It's been on multiple trailers. It's carried this, carried that. Yeah. It got retreaded. You know, when it, yeah. when it thought it was gonna yeah. die, it got brought back to life. To life. Like that's the kind of shit. Yeah. In all it's very narrative voice. Yeah, and it gets very existential. <laughs> like like for real. This gets deeper. Like it sounds like yeah. silly on the surface. It, don't, it is. Don't listen to this show if you're a nihilist. Because it will <laughs> take you some dark places. <laughs> Please <laughs> seek it out. Listen to it. Yeah. It, if you can't find the actual podcast, go to 99pi.com or I'm sorry, dot org. Or they'll have a link there, find, yeah. Yeah, or just find ninety nine. Oh man percent invisible on iTunes or whatever your platform of choice is and, and find that episode. It's so freaking good. Anyway, let us know podcast at gmail.com. Yep. Um, and we are, uh, we're, 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 we, we're about ready to wrap it up, but if you have a, a podcast that you're, you've been listening to lately, that is just amazing. Uh, email us that as well. Podcast at ritual misery.com and let us know what we should be listening to. What awkward and odd podcasts you find uh, I, I want I want podcasts to have super shitty audio because <laughs> if if you like not this one, jerks. Um, if you have a podcast out there that you love that the content is just amazing but the audio quality is complete shit, let me know. I want to hear it. I want to experience it for myself. Um, 
partly because that's kind of where I might be going when I get out of the military, and partly because I, lo- I love enjoying podcasts that are produced worse than ours. So I, on the other hand, would love to hear a podcast that is audio or audioly audio uh, 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 audiologically, uh, f- phonically, no. Whatever, uh, sound wise, <laughs> sounds perfect. perfect sounds perfect, complete. but the content is crap. So I send those my way. <laughs> I could probably give you a couple right now. <laughs> well, right, but anyway, yeah, all of your podcast ideas, uh, uh, podcast at ritualmisery All right, um, hey, where uh, where can, where else can people find you, Ken, if they want to want to send you some yeah. stuff? Yeah, if you want to just comment on the the silly things that I post uh, without asking my friends if it's okay to post them, <laughs> rm underscore del noche. On Twitter, pretty much everywhere else, I am either Del Noche or Del Noche seventy seven. What about you, dude? At Ethan Kane, also Instagram at Ethan Kane. I just changed it today. It was uh, Anthony Lemos, but I got no. That's that's dumb because everything else is Ethan Kane. So I went and switched it back over to Ethan Kane. Well, that's not, whatever. Uh, it's Ethan Kane on Instagram. Follow me to find these uh, the the pictures. And if you want to give me some feedback on that stuff, it would be greatly appreciated. If you got shitty feedback, at least make it worth my time to read. Make it funny. Uh, if if you want provide some serious feedback by all means let, let me know um you can follow the show at ritual misery on the twitter the the show is not on instagram i don't think we should probably do that before people go and yeah. do that for us um <laughs> as, I, as i say that live <laughs> yeah it, it, if, if it's gone in 10 minutes we know it's one of our live viewers right now <laughs> um and of course you can uh, go go to the uh, 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 words i've been screwing this this yeah exit up, it's like usually last about the same times. place yeah. every time uh, um, submit so ideas, yeah, on ideas subreddit. to our subreddit hey, jerk i didn't say take over oh <laughs> 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 uh, submit ideas on our subreddit ritual misery.reddit.com we have had a few ideas in there they've been pretty awesome so cruise on by there ritual misery.reddit.com and you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give us feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.com slash ritualmisery. And we would like to give uh, many thanks to all the people. Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not done yet. Uh, we, we got a post show tonight, a guaranteed post show. Um, we uh, it, it, And we will, uh, it, yeah, um, thanks to all the people that help us out and give us stuff and do stuff for us. In particular, um, Big Voice J, uh, Mike Beam, and um, Kevin McLeod. Thank you for listening, yep. for Kent, for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya! <laughs>